All right, everybody. I think I have this all set up. The laptop's on, the phone's on as a backup. Um, but I'm excited for anybody who's watching this tonight. Um, this was a presentation we had live in the office just last week as far as, I mean, you might be watching this in a year or five years, but um, this is 2022 and we are coming into, I guess, the fall slash into the winter time of 2022 after three pretty long years of, um, everybody knows, the COVID years. Um, so I'll tell you what, it's been, and I'm going to change my angle just a little bit here to make that a little clearer, hopefully. It looks like the screen's a little fuzzy. So hopefully you all can see me okay and see the screen okay. But uh, anyway, this has been a journey, holy smokes, in our office, in our home, honestly, with us and our kids, man. I'll tell you, the sickness and the crud um, is at an all-time high. Seems like everybody and their dog and their chicken and their horse are all getting the congestion and the sinuses and the flus and, I mean, all the stuff, right? So if you hear me right now... I don't normally sound like this. I'm a little congested and nasally, um, but here's the point. The point of this talk is not that we will not or should not get sick, right? Symptoms that sometimes present are our body's natural way to fight off the invaders, right? The germs, the whatever you want to call them, the viruses, all the stuff. Our immune systems have these natural, innate, inborn, God-given things that are supposed to happen if we get something. Now, so the point of this talk is not, oh my gosh, with the right chiropractic care and vitamins and all the things you can do is not that you will never get sick. It's that you will kick the sick or your kids will kick the sick faster, more efficiently than ever before. And that's what we've experienced in our own home. And that's what we experience every single day with patients. There are a lot of our team members and our patients in our community um, who they tell us all the time, oh my gosh, everybody in the house or everybody in the family or the school, everybody's getting sick, but my kids, they haven't had anything going on. I haven't been sick. That And so that's amazing. I mean, we hear that a lot, um, but don't let it be discouraging if stuff does come into your home. Because again, I'm going to talk about that a little bit tonight. Stuff, and I'll start right now, I guess. Stuff has come into our home and it's hit our kids pretty hard this fall as far as like often, like frequent. You know, Stetson, our little guy to almost three years old next week, uh, he's in daycare and it seems like every time you walk in that place, every kid in the place is coughing and snots running and oh my gosh, you know, just whatever. And the girls are both in school and we've been getting emails and phone calls from the school about how many kids are missing and, um, you know, absent and all the stuff going around. So point again is not that you won't bring things into your home, but you know how to and you can equip yourself and your family to be able to handle it well. Um, so that's what this is all about tonight. So here to give you some hope some help and some answers. A lot of you guys out there, probably you moms, I mean, I'm guessing nine out of 10 people, maybe 9.9 .9 out of 10 who watch this are going to be moms. Um, and, you know, that's just the reality right now. But man, make your dads, make the husbands, make the partners, make them watch this, have them watch this. Because honestly, um, I was kind of in the dark for a lot of years too. Thank God for Dr. Brittany, you know, my wife, you guys all know, um, she's taught me so much over the years and kind of got me on board with uh, the mindset and the thinking that we currently have, the belief system that we currently have. And really that is as believers, we think, you know, God made these bodies of ours amazing and miraculous and they know how to deal with things. Now, Thank God for modern medicine. Thanks God for uh, medical intervention and surgeries and medications because they can be very life-saving. But I want to make this point right up front. Our belief, my belief wholeheartedly, and I have a lot of uh, friends in the medical profession too, is it's there to put out fires, right? If you don't have a blazing inferno going on, um, you probably should think twice about using that as your primary go-to thing, the, the answer, right? And, and we're going to dive into some of the science of why that is. That's not just an opinion of mine. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of science and research that's showing what medications, antibiotics, steroids, cough suppressants, fever reducers, what those things do, not only side effect wise, but how they actually change your immunology and your immune system right? And in not a great way, okay? So there's a reason that our country is becoming more chronically ill. 
It's crazy, guys. One in four kids, 25 percent. Did I do that right? One over four, 25 percent of our kids have chronic illness in this country now. I mean, it's just it's just mind boggling and it's only going up and it's only going to get worse. Why is that? Does it have to be your kid? We're going to give you some hope and some help and some answers tonight. All right. So let's dive in. If this thing works. There we go. So if you can see the screen, take a look at these four pictures. Who's the healthiest little kid in this picture? There's a guy showing his muscles. There's a little one laying with a thermometer in his mouth that doesn't look too healthy. There's a girl blowing her nose. And then there's a little dude, man, he's all jacked up about his vegetables. He's got some lettuce and some spinach and some peppers and some cucumbers. He's eating and rocking his healthy um, lifestyle. You can't tell. That's the point of this. You cannot tell. Just because two of them look happy and two of them look sick, you have no idea which one of these kiddos is actually the healthiest, which one has the strongest immune system. And I'll tell you why. The girl on the bottom left that's blowing her nose, it's all congested, mucus, coughing stuff up. That is part of our God-given innate ability to get the crud out. We need to express the stuff out of our bodies, right? The kid on the upper right here, as far as my screen, thermometer in his mouth obviously has a temperature, right? Fevers. Oh, fever, 101. 100. Oh my gosh, we need to take Tylenol. We need to No, and if that's you, I'm not trying to shame you right now. But guys, think about this. What is a fever for? What does a fever do? It raises the temperature to kill stuff. It's not going to kill you at 100, 101, 102. There's actually a lot of debate in medicine right now, guys, uh, about, you know, you hear about the 104 temperature and that's kind of where it's getting to be in an emergency and you need to go get in and get that temperature down. Um, and I'm not here to tell you that's wrong. This is that's not my scope. That's not what I'm saying. But I do know there's been some medical providers, but pediatricians in our area even who have been talking about 105, 106, 107 actually not being as life threatening as what they thought it once was. OK, so I'm just putting that out there um, because, you know, at some point, yeah, you might want to try to get your kiddos fever down. But fevers are, again, our innate God given way to fight and kill the crud that's in there. Um, and we just have to be smart about that. Do we really want to suppress it or do we want to support what's happening in the body? OK, so acute versus chronic illness is a big and I'm going to move my little picture here real quick. Acute versus chronic, right? So an acute fever, acute congestion to get the crud out, that's okay. Chronic, like when you're turning things chronic and it's days and days and weeks and weeks of congestion and sinus issues and coughing, and that's when it really becomes a problem, right? So, but what we're going to see now is, and more than ever, is how much chronic illness there really is. And I just said that one in four kids now are dealing with a chronic illness in our country. It's pretty crazy. So if you guys have been around our office, you know, we have have a lending library with books on it. And one of them is Eat Dirt by Dr. Josh Axe. Dr. Dr. Josh Axe is a mentor, um, an awesome dude, super smart guy. He's a, he's a naturopathic doctor. Um, uh, I don't remember his exact title, but anyway, it's probably on the book right there. But the point of this is what it says right here, not quote unquote, not all exposure to germs and bacteria are inherently bad. Fever is an overall beneficial process for the host and cough is an important defense reflex, right? So think about when we are, have a cough, especially a productive cough, do we want to suppress that? Do we want to like make it not happen? What is that actually going to do if you use common sense here? It's going to keep the crud in. Do we want to keep the crud in or do we want to get it out? Right. So, again, I think all of you would say here, oh, I've never thought about it that way. I didn't think about it that way a long time ago, many years ago. So you're not alone. Um, same thing with fever. We just talked about fevers are uh, a way to fight and kill the things that that are um, you know not supposed to be in there. So the question then becomes this. I've already said it a couple times. Do I support the immune system or do I suppress it? What have you been doing with you or your kiddos? Are you supporting it or are you suppressing it? What does that even mean? Do I strengthen my immune system or do I stay safe? 
Now, I'm not making light of this at all, because obviously the last few years have been really hard and emotional on a lot of people. And there are a lot of immunocompromised people. There are a lot of elderly who are at higher risk. So we want to be sensitive and compassionate towards them. But I think the proof is in the pudding right now where the measures that we have taken did not work, number one, for the majority of people. Um, it went, and again, hindsight being 2020, of course, it was new and it was hard. So I'm not saying anything here. I don't want to get polarizing, but staying safe as far as um, you know, sanitizing everything and using bleach on every surface and toy and countertop in our schools what we are suffering the consequences now. This is one of the reasons, the main reason more than likely that we are having this hit so hard right now with all of our immune systems because we killed everything or thought we did. We haven't been uh, around people as much and that is how our immune systems naturally build and strengthen is by interacting, by hugging, by playing, by touching by coughing and sneezing on each other, getting boogers on each other, right? Um, so that's how the immune system, you know, uh, uh, really operates. We all know the term herd immunity, right? So we need that in order to strengthen our microbiome, our gut bacteria, and our immune system. So we need to strengthen and not just try to play it safe. There's kind of a fine line there. What's safe versus what's kind of neglectful um, as far as what you're doing too much and you're actually hurting yourself more than you realize. So through our clinical experience, and not only ours here, but uh, many clinics and places across the country that we interact with and talk to all the time, time and time that kids who were coming in with chronic illnesses were being told or recommended and given things to suppress the immune system as opposed to advice on how to strengthen and support the immune system. This is kind of like uh, you know, common medicine 101, you know, you take your kid in with a fever or a cough and they give you something to suppress it. That's just kind of common, right? Whether it's a cough suppressant, fever reducer, antibiotic for an infection, um, anything like that. Now, one thing I will tell you, if you have not read into some of the uh, literature about those specific things. So look up, you know, fever reducers like Tylenol, look up cough suppressants, look up steroids, uh, inhalers, those kind of things, and look up antibiotics. It's scary. It's scary, scary, scary. Not only the side effects that can happen, but if you really dig into the science, it's even scarier what it does to our long-term immunity and immune system. Right. So uh, it you might take antibiotics and not have a side effect on the sheet. You know, mayoclinic.com or whatever. Dr. Google says, oh, all these are potential side effects. So that means we know they could happen in you or your kid. Uh, but what it doesn't say there is the potential chronic effects that it has in the future. I'm kind of taking a little bit of a tangent here. Um, but if you haven't watched the talk on the perfect storm, um, go to my YouTube page, Dr. Scott Keller, just search my name. And it's one that's called, this is going to blow your mind. It's, it blow your mind. It's called this perfect storm. I go over a lot more science than I'm going to tonight about Im immune system and stress and how that affects us. And then medications and all these kind of things. Um, so uh, it's just kind of crazy how the recommendations have kind of come to be. It's not you go to your doctor and okay, you need to take, I mean, again, not always, this is not hundred percent of the time, but we just don't hear it very often where it's okay. Take these vitamins, take these minerals, support your immune system with sunlight, regular exercise, water, and really we need to change your lifestyle because that's what's making you sick and more susceptible. You just don't get that very often. Okay, so that is what we mean by suppress or support. Are you just relying on those quick fixes and not really the long term outlook? So here is the key that we're going to get into tonight. We must support the neuroimmune system. Now, everybody's heard immune system. Everybody's heard nervous system. You cannot separate the two, which is why it's called the neuroimmune system. Okay. Neurology controls immunology. They communicate with each other back and forth all day. If you've ever kind of heard of, you know, your gut is a common thing out there. The gut is the second brain because it's so smart. There's so much stuff going on there. It's really where most of our immune system lives is in our gut and the connections between the great, it's called the uh, gut brain axis. So constantly communication between the two. 
Um, if you haven't heard that, well, tonight's the night. You're going to know that not only is the gut the second brain, but guess what controls the gut? The brain, the nervous system. Okay. Specifically, we're going to get into some more detail in a minute. So as a parent, you know, we have three kids, eight, five, and almost three. You know, you wouldn't or shouldn't have known all of this. There's like no, oh my gosh, I can't believe I gave Tylenol to my kids all the time. And that's what I was going to say a minute ago. And I kind of lost track of the train of my thought, but I said this in the perfect storm talk is there's science and research dating back to as far as I know, like 2018, 2019 is when it first started coming out. But even up into this year, that's showing that the safe Tylenol um, that they, you know, recommended for moms to be able to take during pregnancy because it's been shown safe and effective. Well, guess what? It's not. Uh, oh, it's It's been shown more and more and more to basically kind of cause or slash underlie a lot of neuroimmunological or neuro uh, chronic neurological issues and developmental issues with our kids if a mom took too much Tylenol during pregnancy. So it's kind of scary because you think it's safe now, but that doesn't mean tomorrow they're gonna show that it's safe. So you always have to use your intuition, use your gut. So that's what I mean here is like, you wouldn't have known this. You probably don't know all the science behind this. Um, it's not your job to really know that other than you need to advocate for yourself. And that's what we're really encouraging you to, to do um, tonight through this talk, spread this to as many people as you know, because that's really what we're here for. You know, we're chiropractors, we're trained in immunology, but not as much as, you know, some other people would say, but it's really about the body's innate ability to be able to handle these things and educating you. It's, it's, we're, guides. We're not, we're not know-it-alls. We don't know everything, but we're guiding you to find your own information, education, and then that way you can make your own decisions, right? So that's, that's the point of um, a lot of the point of tonight and to open your eyes to some of the other options that are out there. Um, so the last line there, more and more people are seeing sick care, right? Sick care, healthcare system, and the research as well as proving it to be wrong in so many ways. So like I said earlier, with medications and drugs and all these things, more and more and more research is coming out that's showing that's just not the way uh, we should go. It's not the first thing we should do. Okay, so let's hit it in. Let's get it in here. Four eyes of chronic illness. Number one, inflammation. Number two, imbalance. Number three, interference. Number four, injury, which could be physical, chemical, or emotional. If you've been into our office, uh, you hear us talk a lot about these physical trauma, chemical trauma, which is toxins, nutrition, things you put in and on your skin, even including makeups and lotions and those things. And then emotional health, emotional trauma, all the stresses of life, money stress, life stress, relationship stress, school stress, all of that. Those are all considered injuries and all can relate to this. OK, so the first two things can be good. If you have inflammation and a little imbalance, your body kind of senses that and knows uh, usually how to go about changing that for the good. Like I said, the body is an innate, smart thing. Right. So imbalances in their neuroimmune system cause inflammation. But why? To get to imbalance, there has to be some sort of interference first into the system. It's been thrown off by something. Think about it like that. And that's where number four comes in. Number four, an injury, an insult, something happens causing some interference, creating an imbalance, creates inflammation, okay? Um, and then, sorry about that. And then um, the cycle just continues on and on and on if you don't interrupt it and know how to interrupt that cycle, right? So one of the things that you need to think about is the injury or insult if you want to think about it like that, accumulated early and often into the immune system will trigger interference and malfunction leading to imbalance. Again, we already said this, inflamed 24-7, chronic inflammation. Um, and this leads to, again, if you have a kid with chronic ear infections, a chronic cough, chronic runny noses, chronic rashes, chronic eczema, all the stuff that's chronic and it doesn't go away, this cycle is happening in your little one or in you. And it's not just sickness. Uh, so I said a couple of these, but rings under the eyes, right? Dark circles under the eyes is a chronic kind of indication that they're struggling. Rashes, congestion, gut issues, constipation, diarrhea, not pooping well. All of these things are happening. Now, I'm going to tell you a personal experience here. I mean, we're real. Like, we're not perfect. Dr. Brittany and I, we do our best. We know a lot, uh, but we're constantly learning. Uh, so Ruby our five-year-old, five and a half years old. 
she's one of those little kids um, that she just kind of a lot of times has the dark circles under her eyes, right? Um, she sometimes doesn't get enough sleep, probably just worrying a lot of things, activities and stuff. But one of the things, if you don't know about her history is, um, and I'm not going to go long story here, but it, to the, the 20 week ultrasound, we found out she had some midline defects. Um, so she had uh, some heart defects. We thought were going to be emergency surgery and we didn't know if she was going to survive and, you know, that whole thing. So the last five months of our pregnancy was uh, pretty stressful, right? Um, so she's a miracle. Uh, she's here and she's thriving. But because of some of these changes in her body, she's just a couple steps back from our other two, Raylan and Stetson. Just, you know, they don't have those dark rings under their eyes. They don't seem to fight things. Um, they fight things a little better than she does, exam for example. But we are supporting her. And I can say with a smile on my face that eight years, three kids, eight, five, and almost three, we have not given one drop of Tylenol. We have not given one cough suppressant. We have not had to use one antibiotic, even with her conditions, some would call immunocompromised to some degree. We haven't had to do any of that. And we also have not kept her safe, kept her away from other kids, literally nothing. We haven't done anything. She's at school, she's at daycare, she's at all places, okay? So it, it's not perfect for us. We're learning and we're going, but she is healthy. Um, but we just wanna kind of give you guys um, a few of those things you can kind of look for so you know, okay, these are soft signs. These are signs that maybe something's going on internally with my little one. So the key to all of that is finding the cause, right? So the two keys, balance, and our bodies are smart and well-designed. So here's the key. Balance is the key. Here's what immunology 101. So you could read about this all night and still not probably understand it. So I'm going to simplify it a lot for you. Your immune system basically has two little parts, Th1 and Th2. They, it stands for T helper cells, right? The Th part. So Th1 is also known as um, cell mediated. Th2 is also known as humoral. So Th1, if you've seen these next two terms, parasympathetic and sympathetic. So parasympathetic and sympathetic are things that we talk about all the time in our office. They're the two divisions of part of our nervous system known as the autonomic nervous system. Basically think about it as the automatic nervous system. It controls everything, every organ, gland, tissue, cell, the autonomic nervous system has control over, right? So think about the sympathetic as being the gas pedal in your car and the parasympathetic as being your brake pedal, right? Sympathetic, brrr, rev the engine, gas on, we're going fast. That's our fight or flight mechanism. That's when stress hormones elevate, heart rate elevates, blood pressure elevates, all these things elevate. Basically, it's a survival mechanism. It's also the part that initiates, it sends the electrical signal to your heart to beat, right? You got to get that gas going for the heart to beat. Parasympathetic is the opposite of that. It slows everything down. It says, okay, too much gas. Let's break. We got a stop sign coming up. We need to slow up. There's traffic over here. Let's be careful. It kind of balances that gas pedal out a little bit, okay? You have to have both of them. Parasympathetic is also known as the rest and digest and heal and grow, but which what well, sounds great on paper, but you have to have the sympathetic in order for the parasympathetic to work. So they work they really work in conjunction with each other. Okay. So TH1 immunity is also known as the parasympathetic division, is also known as the expressive immune system. So get the crud out. That's when the cough is initiated. That's when the fever is kind of ramped up to kill and get the stuff out. The Th2 system is the sympathetic side. So that's the suppressive immune system. So it pushes it down. It keeps things in, thus becoming more chronic, okay? So you don't want that to happen very often when we get these things inside of us. So like it says in the next bullet point, too much of either is not good. So it doesn't say this on the screen, but if you have a dominance of Th1, like I said, it looks good. But too much of that actually has been shown to kind of be underlying autoimmune conditions. So your body's constantly trying to like fight itself and get stuff out, turns into autoimmunity potentially. TH2 is the suppressive part that's going to push it down, leading to cr more chronic illnesses. Okay. Um, 
Now, okay, I'm going to probably wait for a second. Our bodies are smart and well-designed. Homeostasis is basically, everybody's probably heard that term, but monitoring and responding and regulating, um, all the systems are working together simultaneously by one master controller. That master controller is literally the brain and the nervous system, okay? Uh, what I was going to say up there, actually, I'll go ahead and talk about it right now, is the, if again, if you really want to dive into some reading and research, uh, TH2, you'd have to dive pretty deep, but I found it myself, and I've taken some good courses on it from some PhD immunology type people. TH2, which would include um, the classes of medications like antibiotics and steroids and all these things uh, that we've talked about that are supposed to, that are suppressing symptoms. Um, they they are activating this TH2 response. And if you do that too much too often, guess what? You're really probably doing more harm than good, right? So that's when these things are turning chronic, chronic ear infections, chronic coughs, asthma, allergies. Um, and that's the one that's going to probably catch some people's ears. So many kids and so many of us end up with allergies um, and asthma. And a lot of times it's not until later in life, right? So well, how do you explain that? Well, let's just think about this for a second. Let's think just logically without even knowing the science of it. If you go through your life and let's say as a kid, your parents didn't know, you know, any better. So they just did what they thought was right. And they gave you Tylenol and they gave you cough suppressants, suppressants, or you had an inhaler or whatever. Um, and you did that through your childhood years, teenage years, 20s, and then all, all of a sudden in your 30s, you have allergies that you've never had before. Anybody know why? Too much of this TH2 response over too many years has finally suppressed and put things down and activated that part of the system so much that it started to turn these things chronic and activated these, these systems in your body that now, boom, now your body doesn't know how to even fight it. It just wants to, you know, it just allergies. There you go. It gets in and now it creates an issue, which is why I talk about who's invited to the party. This is kind of a silly little analogy to kind of explain that. If that didn't make any sense, let's do this. There's two examples. Parents. Okay. If any of you guys have kids, do you follow your kid around and clean up after them? Or do you train them as they get older? Again, age appropriate here. Do you train them to pick up after themselves? Okay. So I have an eight and a five-year-old. Now stats in three, he's really learning. He's probably, he, honestly, he probably picks up after himself better than our two girls do at this point. They're going through a little rebellious period right now. Um, but honestly, we try to train them up into cleaning up after themselves, right? So if you do it for them and follow them around over and over, first of all, please stop. Don't do that. Uh, parenting 101 there. So they will learn that you are there to take care of it for them. So they don't have to do it. Like, shoot, man, if I could go make dinner and like leave the dirty dishes all over the counter and not ever have to wash them. And I just know somebody else is going to come do it. Why in the heavens would I ever do the dishes? I would never touch a dirty dish ever again. I hate doing the dishes. I do it because it's necessary, right? So I wouldn't show up to do the dishes. Your kids ain't going to show up to clean up after themselves if they know they don't have to. So who's invited to the party? That's where this one <laughs> comes in. Sorry, delayed. Uh, uh, here we go. If you show up to a party in a full costume, full tuxedo, full gown, whatever, whatever kind of party it is, ready to roll, you go knock on the door and they don't let you in and say, oh, your name's not on the list. So you go home, bummer, darn it, I'm going to try again next weekend. So the next party, you do the same thing. You take three hours, get ready, look good, tuxedo on, dress on, knock on the door. You're not on the list. You do that two, three times, man, you're probably not going to waste your time and keep going back, right? Right? Okay. Silly analogies, but really true. This is exactly what happens to the immune system when we use medicine to suppress and not support. We program it to think it doesn't need to be there any longer. Why would it work if it's already kind of getting all this other outside help um, to take care of the problem, right? If you're going to do it for me every time, I'm going to I'm going to stop showing up in full force, become weaker and weaker over time. I'm not welcome to the party. Shoot. I just ain't going to come anymore. Simple as that. Really simple as that. That's what happens in our bodies. So. Now we're going to get into the neurology. What's the missing link? The nervous system, right? The harmonizer of the immune system. The vagus nerve. So earlier when I uh, uh, kind of briefly mentioned the brain, brain, sorry, brain, brain's not in here, brain, gut connection and the immune system connection there. Um, this is where we're going to talk about it. 
via the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve, if you don't know, is a cranial nerve, starts in your brain, comes right down through the foramen magnum, which is the hole in the bottom of your skull that leads to your spine, that your spinal cord goes down, kind of winds its way through the cervical spine, goes down into your chest, and it literally has innervation or it uh, controls a lot of the lungs, the heart via that sympathetic signal to get the heart beating and also the brake pedal to get it to slow down. Okay. So up down with the heart rate, um, it controls that. And it also controls your entire gastrointestinal system, the gut, thus controlling the immune system. Okay. So the primary response is activating the parasympathetic nervous system, also known as the relaxation, activation, lymph, which is lymph fluid is like the drainage system of our body and the respiratory drainage motility. So it literally controls all of these things via that parasympathetic TH1 response. So low vagal tone. So think about tone as like tone of a muscle, right? You have high tone, which is like contracted tight trigger points. And then low tone is like flaccid and weak and just floppy, right? So nerves and the neurology can have that same kind of thing. So low vagal tone has been associated with, and this is just a short list, guys, slower emotional recovery after stress. So there's an emotional connection, irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's disease, depression, anxiety, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, irregular heartbeats, and the list goes on and on and on. We can list all sorts of chronic illnesses in there. Okay, so the key is the balanced, organized response that we need. So plumbing and drainage, like like what it says up here, it's responsible for all of that drainage system. Um, the vagus nerve stimulation have an anti-inflammatory parasympathetic response. We've already said all that and getting these symptoms to work optimally. So think about this. And there's there's a neurological component to this, but there's also an anatomical, like how it controls everything. So if you get congested and your sinuses and your nose is clogged and your ears get plugged, there's literally, if it's not draining down and out, right, something's wrong, right? There's plugs, there's literal interference in the system somewhere. So if you've been into our office, like with that kind of stuff, we do a lot of cranial work. We do a potentially ear work, open up these tubes. We do some uh, potentially acupuncture points on the face, the sinuses. Basically, adjustments in the cervical spine are huge for this because they literally physically, anatomically open up some of those drainage systems for things to, to get the crud out. So that's one of the beauties um, and the things that chiropractic can do. And even better than that is how it stimulates the nervous system, specifically the vagus nerve. We know that upper cervical adjustments, C1, C2, specifically the upper two cervical vertebrae, where that vagus nerve is intimately related, we adjust and it, it improves the tone of the vagus nerve. Okay, so all of these things continue to uh, work better if done correctly. Okay, congestion and all the crud starts high. So I kind of just, I got ahead of myself and talked about this, but it's supposed to move down through the neck and into the gut. So the gut is where you get, get rid of it. The neck, the cervical spine is the key. Okay, so I just kind of said that. This is why, you know, I, I don't know, think about stress. Think about just like emotional stress. If you have a stressful day, an anxious day, like where do you hold all that? So many people, they feel tension in their neck, they get headaches. Those are some of the physical, I guess, musculoskeletal signs and symptoms. Uh, but neurologically, you're in trouble, right? All of that, what that's going to impact the vagus nerve and everything that's going on up here. And it's going to not allow you to drain and get the crud out. So one of the things in adults that happens all the time is congestion starts and we're stressed out all the time. And we wonder why the heck it lasts for two, three, four, five, eight, ten 10 weeks at a time, or it's chronic and it's there all the time. If we don't get our stress under control, it doesn't even hardly have a chance. Okay. I hope all that makes sense. So in the stomach, the acid, the immune cells, all that stuff's living there. So that's why it's important for us to get all this stuff to drain down and it's going to kill it down below. If you have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like the 36 hours is a little bit much, but 18 hours, 24 hours of symptoms in one area. So let's take congestion, for example. If it's there for longer than that, it's stuck. That means there's an issue. Everything that I just said just a minute ago, okay? That anatomical stuckness, some sort of blockage going on, neurology is not working correctly. Um, and so, you know, you need to get in to see people like us or have something done, okay? 
how many times, oh my goodness, uh, we adjust an upper cervical spine in someone or do some cranial work and literally immediately people are like, oh my gosh, I can feel my sinuses flowing. Everything's just draining. Okay. It's amazing. Breathing becomes easier. I can take a deep breath again. I mean, so often that happens in our office and it's so fun every single time it does. It never gets old. Um, so again, I kind of said this earlier, antibiotic steroids inhalers are all activating that sympathetic TH2 response. Remember what that means, right? Chronic conditioning, chronic conditioning. We're conditioning our immune system to make things more chronic. Okay. Another huge part, because we're talking about the vagus nerve and neurology here. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to direct you guys and just go watch the perfect storm workshop on my YouTube page. If you don't know how to find that, call our office, email our office. We will send you the link. It is so important to realize, especially with our kids, we're talking about sickness tonight and how to kick it out of the system. Um, but the vagus nerve, literally the most recent finding with it has been, they now know it has connections and direct impact on in the very middle of our brain. We have a structure called the amygdala and it's kind of our social emotional regulation center, impulsivity center. So if you have a kid that's ADD, ADHD, just kind of out of control, doesn't sleep well, tantrums. That's all potentially related to everything we're talking about here. A lot of those kids end up with the chronic illnesses, the allergies, the asthma, the, the, the constipation, the ear infections. And there, it's not coincidence. It's not coincidence. Ear infections and all that crap that I just said is common, but that does not mean it's normal. It's not normal for your kids to have these things. They basically, they don't grow out of that stuff. They grow into new things. I've said that so many times before in other talks, but you'll hear it. They, they'll grow out of these ear infections. They'll grow out of this, you know, whatever, X, Y, Z. But they actually neurologically show, have been showing that's a cascade effect. Those things, as they get older, turn into more of the behavioral issues, the mental disorders, the ADHDs, the spectrum disorders, the sensory processing disorders. If you have kids that are stuck in those types of things, you need to go watch the Perfect Storm workshop or get a hold of us and we'll send that to you. I recorded it just like I did with this one, okay? So what goes wrong? Three types of stress that overwhelm and cause a lot of imbalances. So we, we already talked about these. We'll talk about them real quick. Thoughts and emotions. So with our kids, man, even the little ones, school, social life, milestones, development, spending a lot of time at daycares, not getting enough interaction with parents. I mean, just so many things that can cause these social and emotional issues and traumas. Physical, of course, in the perfect storm workshop, again, I, I hit this for like 30 minutes as far as birth trauma, how much birth trauma is undiagnosed, it will blow your mind. Um, you know, the invasiveness, just the process of not only vaginal birth with, especially when there's interventions such as forceps and vacuums and all the stuff, but C-section births have been shown to be very traumatic and a lot of undiagnosed birth trauma. And we can show again in the research, we show how that can lead to a lot of things going on in your kiddos with development. Okay. Then they get into obviously crawling, walking, they start to fall a lot. They play sports, video games, terrible posture, all these things uh, play a role. Environmental. So not the germs, the germs are there and we obviously need those to build our immune system, but it's more an unbalanced lifestyle, right? So are you eating well? Are you getting the right uh, vitamins that's supplementing the nutrition that they're getting? Are you getting enough sunlight? Are you doing all the exercise? I mean, all the stuff, guys, we kind of all know that. So the point of this is kind of that gas break system. Um, you can't be in growth and protection at the same time. So if the gas pedal sympathetic nervous system is on all the time, ramping those RPMs up into the red on this poster here, you literally, you, you think about it. If you're in fight and flight, fight or flight, fight and flight mode all the time, can you grow, heal, rest and digest? No, it literally shuts the parasympathetic system off. So you cannot have both of those working at the same time, or at least you cannot have a balancing act and one of them is going to be dominant over the other. Okay. So if you look real closely at this handout on the page here, you see all these symptoms at the bottom. It's not just, 
you know, back aches and neck aches and headaches. It's the mental stuff. It's the ADHD. It's the spectrum disorders. It's the asthma. It's the acid reflux, the allergies. It's all directly related to the autonomic nervous system. Okay. So the sooner that you can get a grasp and handle on this stuff, the better chance that you have to make an impact. So what does that mean? Get your kids in to us or someone like us, get on the right track with your kids, with their diet, nutrition, and using essential oils instead of medicines, all the stuff, guys. Like I can't like beg you enough. The sooner you do that, the better chance you have. And I don't think I have a slide on this earlier. So if I'm jumping ahead, I apologize. Uh, I just can't remember. I don't think I do. The Harvard University, if you don't trust me, go look at Harvard. They might be trustworthy a little bit. They know, they're smart people. They have a whole center. It's called the Center for the Developing Child. Um, so what they've shown is, and I wish I had a picture of the graph, but basically the summary of this research is you can change the nervous system, right? It's called neuroplasticity. The nervous system is plastic. It's moldable. It's changeable. To the greatest degree from zero to two years old, it's literally like sky high. We can change that nervous system. And it starts to drop pretty dramatically in the first 10 years of life is your best chance. And then it really starts to drop as we get older. Okay. And then the second part of the line is the inverse of that. It's kind of this curve that starts low and goes high. What that one is, is how much effort and time it takes to make the change. So a baby newborn to two years old has a high, high, high degree of changeability. So we know we can change it better than an older person. And we know it does not take as much time, energy, and effort. Okay. And then these two lines kind of cross about midlife and then go from there. So again, older people like me and older, right? Uh, yeah, we have hope and there's answers for you too, but you know what? Sometimes we're just stuck a little bit more than our kids. This is why I never thought I was going to work with kids, pediatric care. 10 years of my practice was dedicated to adult care and sports injuries and things like that. And I loved it. It was fun. It's fun helping people. Um, but man, this is so much bigger than that, guys. This is like literally changing lives because if we can change the life of a newborn and a baby and get their nervous system operating well and efficiently at the beginning, they might not have the struggles later in life that you and I have. I did not realize that I have sensory processing issues, okay, because I just didn't know until I learned, right? I have high functioning anxiety, ADH type stuff. Okay. And I think back to why that is, and I, I'm not gonna go through the story now, but looking back at from birth to childhood and all the things that happened to me, I can say, boom, boom, boom. Yep. Check the boxes. That's me. That's why I'm struggling with some of the things I'm struggling with now. Okay. We don't want that to happen to your kids. So the big question, how do we change it? Right. We could talk about this for hours. I think nutrition, supplementation, which is number two, um, smart supplementation, because you can't just go buy Walmart and CVS brand stuff, man. It, 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 you guys all know supplements aren't regulated. You've got to go with trusted companies. Um, and we feel like we've done the research and the, and the stuff for you. We have some people that we recommend in our office and we can get that information to you if you want. We use essential oils all the time in our house. We have the, uh, you know, if there's a fever, if there's a cough, if there's a sign of a cold, man, we're diffusing, we're rubbing on chests, we're, we're doing some oral stuff occasionally. It's awesome. It works. Okay. So if you want more info about that kind of stuff, Dr. Brittany does oil classes in the office, uh, usually once every month or two, come to one of those. If you have questions about supplementation, please just email us, call us, but really all of that is fine and dandy and will work. It will not work as effectively if you don't have proper nervous system health. If you haven't gotten that at this point in the talk, man, I'm sorry, I haven't done my job because the nervous system literally controls everything. You cannot digest, absorb, and put to use those supplements unless your nervous system is allowing the cells of your body to do so, okay? So that is the key. Here's some just kind of quick tips for cold and flu season two. Most of you guys know this, but just some other quick tips um, for you. You can look at that. And then we're going to get into some stories here. This is the fun part, man, because these are like real people. These are, and I didn't use their names because of HIPAA, whatever. Little dude L, I like that anyway. Little dude L story. He's two years old. 
This is just an example of kind of what happens in our office when you look at neurology and when you impact it with chiropractic, because that's we're not adjusting these little ones for a stuck vertebrae. Oh, I got a kink in my neck or I got back pain. That's not what we're doing. Right. That's not what we're doing. We are literally changing that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system to create more balance and autonomy. And so you can have more function, better function, optimal function. So this little dude, L, he uh, had a vacuum extraction birth, very traumatic, very traumatic on him and mom. He was jaundice. He had problems feeding right away, lost a lot of his birth weight, uh, had reflux after that, started having allergies to foods gastrointestinal struggles, diarrhea and constipation, ear infections, multiple upon multiple. And this is when they finally found us and presented to our office. They didn't have uh, they, much to, knowledge of what we did, but they wanted to learn. They had heard good things about us, I, I think is how it came about. The goal was to not have to put tubes in his ears. They just didn't want to go that route. They, For whatever reason, their parent intuition said, I don't want to put tubes in my kids' ears. So they came to us. After beginning care, he has zero ear infections over six months and no tubes. Praise Jesus. Sleep has drastically improved, which honestly wasn't even one of their goals, but they didn't even know, man. They didn't, they were, I remember like he's sleeping through the night. Well, we didn't even know that was a possibility. <laughs> that was awesome. Basic illnesses um, is all he struggled with that don't last long. So he's kicking the crap out of that sickness. Awesome. Okay, so how do we do what we do? This is the, the gold right here. This is the key. We, do, we have scanning software in our, in our office that I'm not going to explain like crazy tonight, but a little bit. You need to know what you're looking at here. This is a thermal scan, so it reads temperature at every level of the spine. What controls blood vessel dilation and constriction is the autonomic nervous system. So that sympathetic, fight or flight, parasympathetic, rest, digest, grow. So that's what controls blood vessels. So we know temperature is just showing us imbalances. We see where the stress is at, okay? Big red bars like you see on this little dude, that's not good. That is directly the vacuum extraction birth trauma that he had on his upper cervical spine from the yanking, twisting, pulling. Your neck is not meant to handle the loads that they're putting on the spine at birth. So we just knew this was his big issue. So you see his follow-up scan later, man, that upper cervical, big, huge red bar cleared out. Now, again, it's not perfect. There's a little color here and there. There's still some imbalance of stress. We still have some work to do. But man, you can see uh, he's just gone, come uh, night and day different. Little B, little B, five months when beginning care. Mom had COVID during pregnancy, had an epidural and pitocin, which prolonged her labor. Uh, I'm pretty sure little B kind of got stuck and stalled out, which is traumatic on the baby and the mom. Started having reflux, was colicky. That's not colic in a horse, for example, is a gastrointestinal issue. Um, but a colic is just basically never happy. The baby's just crying all the time, never getting sleep, never happy. Colds and flu that were chronic. Basically, little B was always sick. Sleeping issues. Arching his back. Ah! screaming as he's arching his back was two hours at a time into the night mom and dad were exhausted talk about bags under the eyes dark circles i cannot imagine this we personally our kids have slept through the night from a pretty pretty early age and we've never had issues they've never yeah they do they just sleep well and they're well adjusted <laughs> we're lucky like we're spoiled because we've been adjusting them since the day they were born after beginning care from the parents' paperwork and talks we had with them, 100% improvement in sleep, no arching or screaming, 100% in digestive issues and reflux. He has not had cold or flu in three months, not even after starting daycare and noticed a big change in his immune system. Just not getting sick. So there's his thermal scan. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stress in his cervical spine. Again, doesn't surprise us, shouldn't surprise you now. What did we talk about? Vagus nerve, control of the gut, the immune system, the emotional centers of the brain, all these things tie in. His second scan, or that's probably his third scan actually, um, is just amazing. This scan that I'm showing you on him is called heart rate variability. If you like to read, read about heart rate variability. Every smart device like watches, um, uh, 
uh, geez, what am I trying to say? Apple watches, Garmin's, all the stuff has heart rate variability built into them. Now, the way that they track them is really confusing. This is a clinical model. We take that information and put it in these charts. What you can see is on the left-hand side of the chart, you see that on the bottom, it says sympathetic. On the right side of that middle black line is the parasympathetic. Okay, so we can see we want someone, we want that little white dot, which is the patient where they're at, to be on the middle line. That means they have good balance. We also want it to be high up in that green zone or higher. That is basically showing us how much energy their nervous system has to adapt and cope and deal with the stresses of life. So if you have, think about your phone, your cell phone. If you have a full charge, it's operating at high speed. All apps are functioning well. Everything's clicking, clicking, clicking. If the battery starts to die and gets down into that orange and red zone, what starts happening with our devices? Well, they start to shut down. They'll shut down. They'll slow down. They'll dim the lights. Things are functioning. It's not dead, but guess what? It's definitely not working optimally. The speed, everything starts to slow down. So that's how you can interpret this heart rate variability chart. He was operating in stress mode, sympathetic dominance, and low energy. No wonder he was never happy and arching. And no wonder he was always sick. And look at this follow-up. He's still gaining energy, and we still had work to do, but he's right on that midline. This is why he started to not get sick, because the balancing act was there. Little Dow, four weeks old when she began care. She was a preemie. Mom had gestational hypertension, epidural pitocin, and other meds. Jaundice, NICU for four days. Antibiotic use early and often. Breathing difficulty, wheezing, struggling, and sick. And that was the main reasons for them bringing her to us. The medical providers didn't really know what was going on in her breathing. She, I mean, it was bad. <laughs> and I can't even recreate like what it sounded like. Uh, but they planned to do a surgery on her when she was six months old. She had reflux, was gassy, and had gastrointestinal discomfort, along with getting sick and not feeling well. After beginning care, significant improvement in breathing, and literally the surgeons, they told the parents, we have no idea what you guys are doing or why this happened. We fully expected to have to do surgery on her, but we're not going to. She doesn't need it anymore. If you don't think that's life-changing, and if you didn't get goosebumps right there, I don't know, pinch yourself. Are you awake? Maybe you need some coffee. I don't know. That's awesome. That's amazing. Her reflux went away. The sleep quality, man. And parents, my gosh, if your kids sleep through the night, is that life changing for you? I mean, great for the kid. They're sleeping. They're going to be a lot healthier. But man, I'm sleeping through the night too. That's awesome. I can't believe it. That's amazing. So here's her scan, thermal scan again. A lot of stress in that upper cervical spine. But this was the one. So this one kind of showed us, okay, there's stuff going on. But man, when we saw her heart rate variability, look at that one on the left. She was so stress dominant at four weeks old and so low energy. She's in that red zone. That's scary. Like she just literally didn't have the energy to do anything. And all of these things were just uh, that, that whole cycle of imbalance and interference and inflammation was just happening and spinning and spinning and spinning. So you see her follow-up scans. I, I mean, this is so cool, guys. This last scan on the right, she's not only touching the midline, almost exactly midline, but she's almost up in the green zone. That is just so cool. Little M, two years old. Mom had depression and anxiety during pregnancy, had an epidural pitocin, pain meds via IV during labor, jaundice. She started having seizures, the kid, not the mom. Behavioral challenges, chronic ear infections, and tubes, antibiotic use, one after the next after the next. Literally was always sick. She's like, I don't have, I think we've had a single healthy day since the day she was born. Night terrors, waking up multiple times every night. After beginning care, the night terrors were just drastically less, improved sleep, able to lie on her back without freaking out, which was one thing that they said. No ear infections, fewer illnesses, and able to fight off on her own. No meds, no antibiotics since they began care. Ah, <sighs> that's just awesome. It's life-changing, guys. And there's her thermal scan. Again, what just like the first one we saw, that huge, massive C1 upper cervical vagal nerve shut down, subluxation, interference, stress, whatever you want to call it, that's not good. And we need to get rid of that. And then her follow-up, just amazing. 
Her heart rate variability was also low, stress side, low energy. She's going up in energy into the yellow and midline. She's not done yet, but she is so much better. And we continue on a wellness track with a lot of these kids. A lot of them come in once a week after we get them to restore their health to where they're just doing so much better. And then we continue to see them on a weekly basis a lot of times because they need that that input in order to stay where they're at and maintain that momentum and continue to uh, gain momentum. So I hope that was uh, eye opening for a lot of you guys. Of course, I had to kind of go through that pretty quickly and couldn't dive into all of the science and everything. But the action steps that you need to take tonight is just trust your gut. Start asking questions. If you haven't asked questions, ask questions of your medical providers, your pediatricians. Like if they can't answer them or if they don't answer them to a, to a degree that you're satisfied with, then maybe ask somebody else, do your own research, ask us, whatever you need to do. A lot of times you do follow your intuition and your gut, guys. Uh, that will rarely lead you astray. Number two is find your tribe. What are your values? What confidence do you have? And do you need more confidence? If you need more confidence, I'll tell you, you should join us here. Uh, doesn't mean you have to be a patient. We have a group that meets once a month, a lot of moms and they bring their kids. We have childcare. It's called Pathways, Pathways to Wellness. So every month we focus on an article, something to do with health, wellness, whatever. And we just sit around and talk about it for about an hour. So find your tribe, find people who believe and think the way you do. And, and, you know, we're definitely on the track of, you know, holistic wellness, natural minded folk. So if that's you, man, we'd love to have you join us for some of those, um, those things we put on workshops. Um, so come to our workshops, right? Essential oil workshops, workshops like this, where you just want to continue to learn. Um, again, I've posted a couple workshops that I've recorded in the past on my YouTube channel or email us. If you need the link, if the, if you don't have our email, it's just info at thrivelincoln.com info at thrivelincoln.com. You can search my YouTube at Dr. Scott Keller. You'll find me has my picture. I'm kind of like standing there like this, trying to be a model, which I'm not. Um, or you can give us a phone call at 402-615-6022. Again, 615-6022. Number three, and the most important is honestly, get your kids scanned. The technology we have is second to none, and it's not many people are doing it. Not many people are doing it, Okay. Um, and it's amazing and it's life changing. I honestly look back on 10 years of practice and I was like, how or why did I do this without this technology? It's just mind boggling to me. And I'm a skeptic. If you guys don't know me, I am a skeptic, hardwired neurology in my, in my system. So I had to look at this system and this stuff. And not only had, did I have to research it and, and ask a lot of questions to people, all over the place and get different opinions. But then I had to try, I had to test it myself. I'm like, okay, let's do it on me. Let's do it on my kids. Let's do it on my family. Let's do it on people I know. And, and, and man, I'll tell you what, I, it's mind blowing to me how awesome and how accurate this stuff is and how it tells the story. It tells the story of where you've been and where you're at, which is just the coolest part. Some of the, some of the most frequently asked questions as far as like scanning and ne neurology and all that, the scans are measuring. So we have three scans in the office. Tonight, you saw the thermal, um, which is just thermography. It's temperature, but it's all regulated by the nervous system. Um, Non-invasive can do it on kids, pregnant ladies, whatever. There's nothing invasive about it. Um, the second one, heart rate, heart rate variability. Um, again, it's measuring the time between each of the beats of your heart, which if if the, if the beat between each or if the time between each heartbeat is the same, you're in very poor health, which might surprise you. You actually want that to vary, constantly changing to all of the input that your nervous system is going through. So we want that to be high and that's non-invasive as well. The third one is called an electromyography. Um, so we use that on about five-year-olds and up. So that's why a lot of those kids you saw, we didn't have EMGs or that electromyography. That one's looking at postural muscle tone. So muscle energy, how much energy or stress are you holding in your postural muscle system? Um, and that's pretty fascinating to see that one, not only in adults, but the kids. If you see, if we have kids with spectrum disorders, ADHD, ADD, those kind of things, 
we already know what it's going to look like. It's going to look like an explosion of color because their sensory system is so overloaded. Their postural system is that high tone, how we talked about that. So you're seeing a ton of stress. So what we do with those kids is we start to calm that down. With the adjustments we do, we activate the parasympathetics, the rest, digest, and grow. And as we do that, their nervous system starts to regulate and balance out. And we see a lot of improvement in even those behavioral issues in kids. That's awesome. What do adjustments look like? Not with a baby and a kid, not like your tick tock, doc, Cairo, you know, all the stuff. Now, manual adjustments on certain ages and people are definitely powerful. We do do that. Not on your babies and your kids. Okay. We're talking about gentle, gentle, the amount of pressure that you can put on your own eyeball without freaking out is about is, is usually the amount of pressure we put on an upper cervical spine in a baby and a little kid. Okay. So very light. A lot of times it's just holds range of motion type things. Um, it's not some, not anything that you need to like worry about. We can walk you through that if you don't know what that looks like. How long does it take? Well, it depends on the story. It depends on the chronic nature, how long, how old they are, how deep is that stress? Kind of what I talked about with the Harvard study is the younger they are, the easier it is to change and the faster it usually happens, which is why we, oh my gosh, we just, we, we, we don't beg, but we definitely talk to our pregnant moms a lot, a lot, a lot about bringing their newborns in to get checked. Um, because through that process and that stress, man, there's a lot of things that we can do to, to help that little baby out and get the, get a good start to life. Um, does insurance cover it? We do accept insurance, um, all major carriers, so you can check with us on that. Um, but insurance often only covers a part of what we call a care plan. So if your kid needs three months of care, they're not going to cover three months of care, hardly ever. So uh, Elena and Chaz and the other people in the office do an awesome job of basically trying to figure that out before you come in or at least after the scan day. Um, they sit down and kind of cover it with you. So there's no hidden fees and agendas here, man. We just give it to you and you can make uh, a decision on, on how to proceed from there. So uh, we try to do our very, very best to just kind of put it all out there and be honest with you guys. Okay. All right, y'all. So uh, about an hour. Um, so I hope you got a lot out of that. And if I would just ask one more thing, it would just be to share this link. If you get this in a link or if you see it on YouTube, share this with your friends and family. There are so many people out there hurting right now and so many people that are sick and dealing with this chronic crud that just it just doesn't have to be that way. So we just oftentimes don't know what to do. We, we kind of lose hope because it's like, oh, I guess that's the way it is, right? does not have to be that way. So give us a shout, info at thrivelincoln.com or 615-6022. If you have any questions, I'm always happy to jump on the phone with someone, do a quick little phone console, ask some questions, answer some questions, all that kind of stuff. So until next time, guys, Dr. Scott with Thrive Family Chiropractic. I hope you guys have an awesome Thanksgiving tomorrow. On the night I'm recording this, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. So it's Turkey Day. Um, so hopefully you all had a great Thanksgiving um, and awesome holiday season upcoming. All right, God bless you, everybody. See you later. Thank <laughs> you.